Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to see how to create a very simple GraphQL API using Node.js as the programming technology and MongoDB as our NoSQL database. Um, so if you didn't know this already, I actually do have a, a video course and ebook published on this very subject of uh, API development. So this includes GraphQL as well as RESTful APIs. It's not specific to Mongo, but it does go into a lot more depth than what I'm going to do in this particular video. So this is this will get you where you need to be, um, but there's a whole lot more to the whole uh, GraphQL development thing uh, as well as just web services in general. Um, so if if you do like this video, I encourage you to check out uh, both the ebook and course. Um, so I do have my terminal open. I do have a MongoDB instance running locally. I'm I'm using Docker. I have a previous video that shows how to set it up with Docker, um, but it's beyond the scope of this particular tutorial. So the assumption is that you already have Node available and you already have a MongoDB instance available. So to start things off, what we want to do is we want to create a new project. I'm going to go ahead and say make directory. I'm going to call this Mongo GraphQL project, maybe. I'm going to navigate into it. The next step is I'm going to initialize a new Node.js project. So I'm going to say npm init hyphen y. So that'll leave me with a package.json file. Now I want to in include all of my dependencies. Um, so I'm going to say npm install. I'm going to install, uh, first of all, we're still going to be using Express, even though that this is a GraphQL project. Uh, there are Express connectors. It does make our lives a lot easier. Um, so the Express connector we're going to use is called Express GraphQL. Then I'm going to install GraphQL, which includes all of our data types and schema definitions and things like, like that. I'm going to include Mongoose as our outlet into interfacing with MongoDB. Um, so I'm not going to use just the vanilla MongoDB SDK. I'm going to use Mongo, Mongoose uh, for all of my communication. And I'm going to say hyphen hyphen save. Now, although it's not absolutely required, it does make our lives a little easier when it comes to testing. I'm going to install another dependency. This one's going to be called uh, NodeMon. So this is going to be a hot reloader. So that way, every time we make a, a, a save to our project, it's automatically going to restart our project for us. So I'm going to say hyphen hyphen save dev. So with that installed, uh, we have a, a few more files inside of our project. Um, I want to add one more file. I want to say touch app.js. So that's just going to create an app.js file. And that's going to be where all of our application logic resides. Like I said, this is a simple example. It's a complete example, uh, but it is simple. So all of our all of our code is going to go inside of that app.js file. Um, so I'm going to say um, Adam, and I'm going to open up this, this project with Adam. If you prefer to use Visual Studio Code, that's fine as well. Just pick whatever editor works for you. I'm going to go to my package.json file. I'm going to configure NodeMon uh, because, it, again, it does make our lives a little easier. I'm going to say start for our script. And I'm going to say NodeMon, and it's going to watch the app.js file for us. All right, so go back into your app.js file. Uh, we do need to include the dependencies that we just downloaded. So I'm going to say constant express equals require express. I'm going to say constant express GraphQL equals require express GraphQL. And then I'm going to say this one's going to be a little different. So I'm going to say constant. And there's a few uh, data types that we want to include. This is all part of the um, GraphQL standard library here. Um, so for one, uh, we're going to be working with Graph GraphQL IDs. We're going to be working with GraphQL string. Um, GraphQL list, which is going to be for arrays. Uh, and then we're going to be working with a few other ones. So we're going to say GraphQL object type. We're going to say GraphQL schema, and you'll see what everything is used as we get there. And then finally, um, what we're going to do is we're going to include one more, and this is going to give us the ability to force uh, certain elements to not be null, uh, which is important when we uh, try to do a mutation where we try to accept user input. Um, so we're going to say GraphQL non-null, and I'm going to save it. Um, so we just imported everything. Uh, now we probably want to initialize express, um, so we can say var uh, app equals express. And uh, maybe we want to connect to our, our MongoDB instance. So I'm going to say mongoose, I'm going to say connect, um, and then I'm going to provide it the connection string. So I'm going to say MongoDB, it's a local host for me, it'll be probably different for you. And then the database that I want to use is called the Polyglot Developer. 
Uh, so again, you, you need to have Mongo available to you um, in order to be successful here. Um, next up, we probably want to say app.listen, uh, just standard express framework stuff. We'll listen on port 3000. And uh, when we start our application, uh, we'll just say uh, console.log listening at 3000. Uh, so just a simple message to let us know that it's actually running. Um, so if I wanted to, I could go to my terminal. I can say npm run start because that's the name of the script that we created uh, with nodemon. Um, and it's, it'll run. It looks like it crashed. Mongoose is not defined. It's because I didn't, I didn't import it. So let's go ahead and import it. Doesn't really matter where. I'm going to say constant mongoose equals require mongoose. I save it. It should restart. It should be working now. It is. It looks like all is good. Um, so now we want to worry about um, actually querying um, our database. We want to actually create GraphQL queries. Uh, we're going to be working with one particular data model in our database. So one particular one particular collection. Again, we're, we're keeping this uh, simple for this example. Um, so we do need to create that model with Mongoose. Um, so what we can do is we can say constant, the type of model that we're working with in my database is called, uh, it's going to be around people. So I'm going to call it person model. And that's going to be mongoose.model. Uh, it's going to be part of the, the person or people collection. And I'm going to say uh, it's going to include a last name, which is going to be of type string. And a first name, which is also going to be of type string. So I can save that. So that's our database model. Um, we do need to create models when it comes to uh, GraphQL. Um, so these models should reference almost exactly our Mongoose model. Um, so what we can actually do is uh, we can do the following. Uh, so we can say constant person type equals, this is a new GraphQL object type and inside of this object type, there's a few things that we want to take care of. Uh, first of all, we want to give it a name. Uh, so we want to say name uh, person. Let's call it person because that's what we're referencing. Uh, next up, we want to specify the fields. So these are going to be the properties. Um, so each field should should match uh, what's inside of your person model for Mongoose. Uh, now, it doesn't mean that you can't uh, be missing some or you can't add additionals, but more or less, they should they should match in some sense. Um, so, for example, uh, one that won't match is maybe an ID. Um, so each each document inside of Mongo has an ID. Uh, while it's not stored in, in the data model itself, it's still accessible and it could still be valuable when we return it as part of, part of a GraphQL query. So I'm going to say it's going to be of type GraphQL ID. Uh, we have a first name. This is going to be of type GraphQL string. And we have a last name, which is going to be of type GraphQL string. Um, so we have those we have those taken care of now. Um, so with the person type created, and you'll notice that we are going to be using GraphQL object type uh, some more. Uh, it could represent different things in terms of GraphQL. Uh, this particular one is just just the type, so um, an object. Uh, but we are going to make some changes as we go along. Uh, so we have that. Uh, technically, we still cannot access our API because we don't have any queries defined. Uh, we also don't have uh, GraphQL hooked up to Express. Um, so we're listening. We're listening on a standard server, but it's not hooked up to Express. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say app.use GraphQL. So that's going to be our entry point. And it's going to be Express GraphQL. Um, so this is going to be a middleware here. Um, and we're going to say schema. So that's going to reference a schema that doesn't quite exist yet. So I'll just say null. Um, and we're going to say graph ical. So there's an I in there. So it's not GraphQL, it's graphical. Uh, and this is good for prototyping. It's a, it's, a, it's a web application that's bundled into uh, GraphQL and GraphQL Express. It allows us to, to kind of test our queries. So we're going to leave that as true. And you'll see the value in that shortly. All right, so we have that. Now we can focus on creating our schema, which includes our queries and our mutations. Um, so queries uh, will be read only and the mutations will be write or create or update or whatever you want, to, whatever you want to refer to it as. Um, so let's go ahead and create some. Uh, so first off, I'm going to say constant schema equals new GraphQL schema. 
Um, and in here, we can have a query, or we can have a mutation, or we can have both. Um, so this is where the object type comes in again. So I'm going to say new graph ql object type. Um, and just like with our data model, uh, we're going to have the same type of thing. So we're going to have a name that's going to be called query. We're going to have fields. Um, but instead of the fields representing um, properties of your data, it's actually going to represent different queries that you can run. Um, so for example, uh, I might have a people query. Uh, and people query might query for multiple people. Um, or I might have a person query. So that might query for a particular person. Um, so you can you can in, be inventive as you want. It's 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 perfectly fine. Um, but we do have a schema on line 31, so I can update line 42 to say that this is a schema. All right, so let's let's kind of populate that first one. So this one's going to be uh, people, and then we'll run it afterwards. Uh, so people, we need to specify the the type. So uh, the type is going to be in this case is going to be of type graph ql list person type. Um, so person type, uh, remember we defined it on line 22. Um, but uh, instead of having a type of GraphQL string, it's that custom data type. But it's going to be a list, meaning that there's going to be more than one in the results. So it's going to be returned as an array. We also need a resolve function. Um, so this resolve function includes a root, uh, possible arguments, a context, and then info about uh, the actual function. Um, so the root would be kind of the parent level, um, the, the parent level call uh, to this query. So if you it, potentially you could have nested stuff, um, so that would be the source. The arguments would be stuff that the user can pass in, and then context could include different things like uh, header information, query parameters, things like that. Um, so I have this. So what we want to do here is, since this is people plural, we, we probably anticipate returning several. Um, so we can do a find a find execution on our collection. So uh, we have our person model for mongoose. Uh, we can just say return person model dot find dot execute. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to return all items in uh, that person model. And remember, I could easily add parameters inside the find as part of mongoose, but we're, we're just going to return everything for this example. Um, and I'm going to remove person for now. Uh, we're not going to worry about that yet. I just want to see this in action, right? So what I have is I have this one query. Now, it should automatically reload uh, based on NodeMon. Uh, so that's good. So if I go to my web browser and I go to localhost, port 3000, and then GraphQL, uh, because that's what our um, application should say, uh, it should bring you to a screen that looks kind of like this. Um, and I'll, I'll remove everything so that way it's nice and clean. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to test out some queries in graphical. And you could always disable this. You don't need graphical to use GraphQL. Uh, this is just a convenience for, for testing your queries. Um, so we have a query called people. Uh, and people, we have a possible ID. Uh, we have a possible uh, first name. We have a last name. Um, so let's go ahead and see what we have. So let's go ahead and run it. Um, and as you can see, uh, it has the ID, it has the my first name, it has my last name, it has everything uh, that you'd expect. So this, this returns everything. I only have one document inside of my database right now, um, but at least, uh, at least we have it working. Uh, so let's go back into our code. Uh, let's go ahead and work on that second query. Um, so let's go ahead and work on the person query. So let's say person. Uh, this is going to say our return type is going to be person type. It's not going to be a list. It's going to be a single record. Uh, again, it's going to have a resolve uh, because every 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 time you want to actually return data or load data into uh, that return type, you actually have, a re have to have a resolve method. It's going to also have a root, args, context, and info. And this time around, we're going to we're going to make use of um, we're going to make use of mongoose and its features again. Um, but because we want to return a single person, we need a way to uh, for the user to provide information. Um, so what we can do is we can actually specify arguments, so arcs. Um, and for one, uh, we're going to specify that if we want to return a specific person, we want an ID. And this ID, the type is going to be GraphQL non-null because we want it to be required. And we're going to say GraphQL ID. 
Now, if we didn't care, if we didn't need it to be required, we can just say GraphQL ID, um, and our query would not give us any trouble. Um, but now if, it's, if we don't include it, it's, it's gonna yell at us. Um, so we have one required argument. Uh, we can actually say return person model dot find by ID args, uh, because that's what we've passed it in, dot ID, because that's what we named it, dot execute. And we can save it. Um, so if I went back into my browser and I changed this maybe, so I say maybe this is person, I can say that this is going to be ID. And the ID is, um, let's say one, two, three. Might not return anything. Now it probably failed because this is not a valid ID, for example. Um, so what we can do is let's go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll cut this out for now. Cut it, I'll say uh, people. So let's try to run it. Let's try to get a valid ID uh, and I'll undo this. And let's paste it in and see what we get. So it worked this time. Um, so that error, when I did one, two, three, four, or whatever, um, is just the standard error. This is what Mongoose would return. So Mongoose is returning an error and uh, GraphQL is just uh, printing it to the screen for us. And we can handle it much better, uh, but we won't get into it for this particular example. So I'll just, I'll just go back into doing the ID. Uh, one of the cool things about uh, GraphQL is now I can say maybe people and I can say, you know what, maybe now all I want is the last name. So I run it, and now I have an array of the last name, so I'm, I'm making my own complexity when it comes to these queries. So let, let's go ahead and finish up this tutorial. Um, so there's one more part. Uh, it comes in the form of mutations, so queries would be read-only, mutations would be uh, everything else. And again, that goes into the schema as well. Uh, it just comes in as a different property. Um, so for example, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say mutation, new, GraphQL, object type, name, mutation, fields. Uh, again, this is going to follow the same strategy that we've, that we've seen so far. Uh, fields, let's go ahead and say maybe we want to create a person. So I'm going to say person. Um, and I'm going to say that the type, after we create the person, it's going to be person type because maybe we want to return it back, back to the user. Um, as far as the arguments go, uh, let's go ahead and specify some args. And there's all different ways to do this, uh, but let's go ahead and say first name. Uh, it's going to be of type. It's going to be GraphQL non-null. GraphQL string. Um, let's go ahead and uh, do the same thing for the last name. And after the args, let's go ahead and have an our, our resolve. Root, args, context, and info. And we're not going to be using the, the root or the context for this particular tutorial, maybe for the next one. It's definitely in my book. Um, but for now, let's, let's just go ahead and work with the args uh, that we have. Um, so we're going to say var person equals new person model args. So we're just going to take everything that was passed in as far as first name and last name and create a new person out of it using the, the um, mongoose model. And then we're gonna save it. So I'm gonna say return person.save. Um, now this, this is by no means any kind of data validation. Um, if you wanna see data validation, you, you could probably use joy with this. I do demonstrate how to do data validation in my book. Um, but again, we're, we're going for simplicity here. We just wanna, we just wanna have something working. So I save it. Um, everything looks good because uh, we've got now uh, queries as far as as well as mutations. I can go back into my editor here. Um, so in this case, I want to make some changes. Um, so I'm going to say mutation. This is it. Actually, it's formatted a little different when you when you're working with mutations. But I'm going to say create person. I need to define some variables that are passed. So in this case, I'm going to say first name, string. It's required, hence the exclamation point. And I have last name. So, uh, it's gonna also gonna be a string and required. And this is just the way GraphQL handles it. This is nothing specific to the node example that, that we made. Uh, we're gonna use the person mutation. We're gonna uh, use first name, uh, which is now we have as far as a passed in variable goes. We have a last name as well. And uh, when, we, when we save it, uh, we're gonna be left with an ID a first name, and a last name. Uh, but we can't just run it uh, because we have to define our query variables. 
Um, we can actually define our, our query variables uh, down in the query variable section of uh, graphical. And again, this is going to be different if you're not using graphical. Uh, this is again just a prototyping environment. Um, so there are other ways that you have to follow for your different uh, frameworks. Uh, but we're going to have a first name. I'm going to call this um, Maria and a last name. And I'm going to call this one Raboy. I'm going to run it and it should work. Um, so it saved it. Um, so let's go ahead and do another query. I'm just going to say that this is going to be a, a people query. And again, ID, first name, last name, and I'm going to run it. Um, so as you can see now, there are two results in our uh, request. Um, so just to reiterate here, uh, we did we did a little bit here. Uh, so it's not a small amount of code that we did. Uh, but we downloaded a few dependencies and initialized Express Framework. We connected to MongoDB. We defined our MongoDB data model for our collection. Uh, we created a GraphQL object, um, which uh, would be mapping potentially to our Mongoose data model. Uh, we can have other fields, and these data models, they do a whole lot more than I demonstrated here. Again, this is basic example. Um, we created our schema. Our schema has queries as well as mutations in them, um, but each of our uh, queries and mutations have a resolve function, and that's where actually the heavy lifting is, all of our logic. Um, and then we configured Express to use uh, GraphQL, and we, we enabled Graphical for testing. Uh, and then we just started listening on, on port 3000. So. Uh, that's more or less the gist of it. Again, if you want to read my book and, and watch do my video course, it's Web Services for the JavaScript Developer. Um, and I'll provide a link for it in the uh, notes of this particular episode as well.